can grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. If you're more confident, you're more likely to step out of your comfort zone. If you're more confident, you'll do some prospecting or some lead generation in that zip code that you've had no business going to or you've never sold before. Let's talk about the solid foundation. You can't build a house like this. You can't build a house, a building, a structure on a weak foundation. What happens? What happens when you build that, that cool barn on the, on the bottom of the hill or this house on a weak foundation? So you gotta build a, a solid foundation. One of the ways you can do that is by attending events like today. One of the ways you can do that is be a student of the game, A, B, L. Always be learning, okay? Always be learning, okay? No matter if you're with one brand, you can learn from the other brand, okay? So when I go to these big national conferences, I'm always getting white papers. I'm looking at their special reports. I'm, I'm reading, always learning, getting different perspectives so you can articulate things differently because some clients learn differently than others. Also, it's good to get a good perspective on the way the competition thinks. You never go, know you go on that listing appointment and you're up against a Sotheby's, you're up against XYZ Realty, you're up against whoever it might be. It's always good to know what their unique value proposition is. You never badmouth the competition, but it's good to know. So always be learning. I believe when you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. Let me say that again. Grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. If you're more confident, you're more likely to step out of your comfort zone. If you're more confident, you'll do some prospecting or some lead generation in that zip code that you've had no business going to or you've never sold before. If you're more confident, you'll network with some of those business owners or maybe those high net worth individuals that many agents are afraid to communicate with because of the what ifs. What if they ask me how many $13.997 million listings have I sold before? Now, by the way, you can never solicit, you can never, uh, initiate any conversations with a homeowner that's listed. However, if they call you, hey, I got your name for somebody, I'm not happy, and they initiate it with you, you can return their call or you can talk to them. However, and if you're not sure, check with your broker on that, okay? Never badmouth the competition. Never say, oh, they should be doing this, they should be, but you could say what you're gonna do moving forward if they were to hire you. So on that seven and a half, well now it's seven and a half, at the time on that 12 and a half million dollar listing appointment, he flat out, Ask me, what do I charge? And this might be a writer downer for you. Sometimes people take notes on the phone, whatever. We got notepads on it. I told him I'm by far gonna be the most expensive agent to interview, but let me share with you how you're gonna net more money. Now I'm gonna do some quotes right now. This is kind of my CYA, and I'm based in Chicagoland. If you were to pull 20 random listing agreements below a million dollars, the, the predominant percentage you'd see is 5%. So I hate to say it, but we're kind of a 5% average market. Now, the higher you go up in price point, not just here in Chicagoland or Oregon, usually agents compete by discount. I don't want you to discount, okay? I was doing this training in a town called Kokomo, Indiana. I never heard of Kokomo, Indiana. And at the end, we did kind of like we'll do maybe today's, hey, any ahas? You guys got any ahas you want to share that you learned today? Nuggets? And earlier, and she said, I want to be the most, because I raised, I said, raise your hand if you want to be the, uh, the, the cheapest agent in your market. It's only happened once. This gal was proud. She said, you know, she wanted to be the cheapest agent. And then we went around and go, our, our ahas, and she said, I no longer want to be the cheapest agent in my market. But my point being, that was a question that he asked. What do you charge? What do you charge? When you're at the end of your listing appointment and you say, you see, Mr. Seller, how if you hire an agent that's well connected, they're networked with agents, not just in my brand, but outside of brands, how that might increase your likelihood of selling. Mr. Seller, do you see how an agent who thinks outside the box, that's aggressive, that uses digital marketing, print marketing, uses video, how that might get your home sold? Mr. Seller, and then you keep stacking the offer, stacking the offer, stacking the offer, and he's thinking in his mind, man, they're gonna be charging me 8%, and then when you go and say 6%, they think that's a, it, it's a great deal. So that's one tip I have for you. The other tip I have for you when you're talking about fees, have the commission pre-typed in the agreement ahead of time. And maybe you are nervous to get 5% on a multi-million dollar property. Type in 6% ahead of time. And you know, I really like you, you're a great, uh, I think we'd be a great, uh, you'd be a great client. This is a great property. I'd really enjoy working with you. Normally we're at 6%. For you, I'll do it at 5%. You just gave yourself a 10% raise and you weren't even ner uh, nervous about it. We all ha have to work on some things. 
surrounding yourself, listening. What are you watching? What are you reading? So number one is your foundation. I can't stress that enough. There's no easy button in this life, in this world. You gotta be able to have a strong mindset and, and, and the resources to continue to build yourself up. You're gonna get kicked in the shins, okay? You might get kicked in the shins multiple times. You get knocked down eight times, you bounce back up nine, or at least get back up. It's, I watched that story on Mike Tyson and how he lost to Evander Holyfield. And, uh, I like watching stories of how underdogs win, the Davids versus the Goliaths. They're inspiring to me. That's why the Olympics and, and all these. And I, again, maybe it's different for you, but surround yourself and with these type of people and these kind of stories.